right, let's begin. So as per usual, Cove and Baxter met up on another day for another session. A few lighthearted words were engaged as Baxter watched the two of you amusedly. Cole's mood was still shining and Baxter could tell. Elio, a cute name too. Okay, bye. See you later, friend. See ya, see ya. So? I take it the cake designing went well. Like a child who is excited to show their latest work of crayon art to their teacher, Cove shared the news of pure happiness. It's gonna be delicious. <laughs> I'm so pleased to hear that. What shall we be doing today? Yeah, it's our it's our shark shaped cake. I forgot I forgot what I made it taste like. <laughs> I, I think I had like three flavors. Uh oh oh we can decide our clothes. Okay, yeah, let's get our clothes. Even though I already I already decided on the clothes. I already bought our Tales of Vesperia themed wedding outfits. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to, like, a cosplay, like, building <laughs> to buy the Urian Flynn outfit. <laughs> I just noticed Katamari Damacy on the bundle. I need it now. Let's go! Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy that when I get paid, too. I I've always wanted to play Katamari Damacy. I think I played one of them because my friend had it on the PS2. Wonderful. He clapped his hands together at the thought. Well... I can imagine you'll both look incredible, so... I recall that you both were planning on getting your outfits together. Is it a couple's only time, or are there plans to bring anyone else along? I want my dad to come. Sounds like something a best man should do, right? I mean... I know my mom would want to come too, but she doesn't live close, so, you know... I love the goofy aesthetic and music of it. Old Sven could do with silly, goofy, cozy games. Na 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 katamari damashi ooh 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 ooh. <laughs> uh, speaking of like songs and stuff, and I I actually made the decision to actually like seriously try and cover a song. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could have it out like around when my new model comes. That would be nice. But I am actually like pumping myself up for it. Like I'm gonna, once I have the money too, I'm gonna commission art for it. And I'm gonna ask if one of my besties can do the mixing on it. <laughs> I know I'm not asking anyone because I don't have the money for it yet, but I was thinking about it last night. And I'm like, yep, you better do this. You better not back out of it, Elio. <laughs> Cove shrugged weakly. Baxter nodded with a faint quirk of humor in his expression. It'll be nice for Mom to see it on our actual wedding day, though. Of course. You felt for Cove, familiar with the issue yourself. You could think of a few geographically unavailable people. It would have been nice to bring with you as well all of my friends in Australia. <laughs> Teleporters would make life so much easier. Yeah, it would be a lot more convenient. Even though it would have been nice for Cove to share the experience with his mom, he was sure that no matter what Cove wore, Kyra would still be just as excited to see him on the big date. I think she lives in Seattle, right? Because her new boyfriend is in Seattle. How far away is Seattle from Cal? Is Seattle's in Cal? Is she <laughs> I don't even know my own state. <laughs> Is Seattle in California? It's in like Washington, right? Am I right? Let me see. Northmost major city in the United States. Okay, it is the seat of King County, Washington. Okay. I was right, okay, it's in Washington. <laughs> I did a test for like the states in school. I got a decent grade, but I cannot remember what it is or why. Yeah, I only know like California, Nevada, Utah, Texas, like vaguely the area of like New York. Oh, and North and South Dakota. I know those ones pretty good too because they're just squares on top of each other. <laughs> Honestly, I forget most EU countries do same. <laughs> 
I can only remember if I have vividly in my head a Hitalia character <laughs> associated with it. <laughs> and they say Hitalia doesn't teach you about countries. <laughs> Let me see. Whatever makes you happy, Ko. A small smile crept on Ko's face. Thanks. I'll give Dad the heads up, so he'll be ready. That's great. I only know Scandinavia and Scandinavia adjacent. Those important. <laughs> yeah, I know Australia too, because I've looked up Australia a lot. <laughs> Hmm. Should I have my mom come? We're just gonna be looking at Tales of Vesperia cosplays. She's gonna be like, God damn it, Elio. You really making your husband dress up as Flynn Skifo for your wedding? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll all have a good time. Definitely. He scratched the back of his head, unintentionally mussing about his own hair. I don't know anything about wedding clothes. Might be good to have more people to talk to about it. With that decided, Baxter rubbed his hands together in satisfaction. Australia's kind of like, off over there, mate. <laughs> Quacky. Perfect. But before you run off on that next outing, it would be best to choose where you're going. Do you have a preference on which store or stores you'd like to visit? There are two excellent local shops that should be able to set you both up to whatever you need. Where's the cosplay house? <laughs> All right, I'm back. Welcome, dwarf. Hello, hello. One is primarily a dress boutique, but it also has romper and skirt options. The accessory selection is also divine. Where's the cosplay house? Oh yeah, some good news. My order I made for a fat little bear arrived today. He is beautiful and I call him Mini Hank. What? I wanna see. <laughs> Dwarf, greetings. Hello. There's also a shop that focuses on suits, pants, suits, skirt suits. They have it. They also have all the relevant additions that you'll be likely to want. Where's the cosplay? I guess. I'm not gonna wear a suit, so I guess I'll need to go to the suit shop. Oh wait, you're gonna wear a suit. No, no you're not. You're wearing a knight armor. I set up a modeling session for Mini Hank right now. Ooh, let, let me see the pics when you're done. <laughs> what do you think? And you, Bun? Cosplay house. Um. Uh... I guess we could pretend we're in the suits that Eerie Flynn has worn. It's doable. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me, Baxter. It's doable. Well then, I'd say that's settled. Cove nodded, happy with the plan. Lovely. You make this so easy for me. <laughs> Baxter sounded pleased as he reached over for his notebook on the nearby desk. He clicked his pen and jotted something down. I'll leave the rest up to you, and I'll see you both during your next session. Good luck. Oh boy. His smile was curled but bright. He waved you both off. Thanks. Cove's voice was nervous as he started to shuffle out. You got up following him. Ah, blah, 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 blah. See you next time, Baxter. Time passed from your meeting with your planner, and soon both you and Cove were going out for the big shopping trip. The time came for the big shopping extravaganza. You and Cove piled into his old car and drove off, ready for what was to come. There was a pit stop at the old neighborhood to pick up Mr. Holden. Conveniently, he was in the direction of the shops. Cliff clambered into the back seat, happy to have been invited. The three of you had a nice drive, the conversation slowly hyping up your destination. Cliff had several interesting suggestions that you assumed were jokes. <laughs> Come on. Cove, you can always borrow my shark tie if you want. No, he's dressing up as Yuri, or not Yuri. He's dressing up as Slinsky Foe. Stop ruining my wedding plans. Cove affectionately rolled his eyes on a red light. 
He just shot down his dad's idea of a printed t-shirt with a picture of a tux. <laughs> I think I'll be okay, dad. How did Mr. Holden and Clara get married if he's suggesting the shark tie and a printed on tux shirt? Is that what he wore to his wedding? I completely understand. Maybe it'd suit Buddy more. No. Up ahead was a very proper fancy building. You could tell it was going to be really nice. I don't see Tales of Vesperia cosplay here. Boy. The door was heavy when you pushed it open. You entered the formal shop and took it all in. Ko followed behind you, blinking at the bright lights of the shop. The floors were slick and sli slick and slimy, no. Slick and shiny. If you ran your shoe over it just right, a squeak would echo through the space. It's not surprisingly well lit, showing off all the strikingly prim wares available. Each rack of clothing had its own dedicated spotlights. He shivered a little at the temperature, but it was appropriate for the heavy formal wear customers would be trying on while in the location. Kuvin made his way to the center of the room and then froze. His eyes wandered all around, his head a swivel. He was clearly intimidated by not only the large amount of available options, but also the classy vibe of the shop. Mr. Holden rubbed the back of his neck as he gave the merchandise a wide berth. <clears throat> Now I remember why I never owned a full suit in my entire life. You didn't wear a suit to your wedding? Sir? Did you really wear that to your wedding? Bruh. No wonder Kyra divorced you. God damn. These two idiots? Yeah, what the fuck? A man in a pressed gray suit and a green spotted bow tie appeared. He brought a hand up to his chest. Hello, I'm Thal, and I work as an assistant here. How can I help you? What kind of name is Thal? Dude, they got trashed and got some shotgun wedding in Vegas, 100%. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they were just like, yeah, let's just, let's just get married. <laughs> I'm COVID, this is funny. We're getting married. Come ducked his head as his face broke in into a wide grin. I... Well, we need something to wear to the wedding. Thal perked up as he inspected the two of you. Of course, I'd be thrilled to work together to help the both of you find something. Who would like to be helped first? Oh. Club stopped shifting around and directed all of his focus to you. I guess I'll do it? That's fine with me. Thal sidled up to Cove with a sparkling white smile. Uh, what do you want to see today? We would like to see the Tales of Esperia cosplay suits, my fine man. Maybe. A suit with pants and some other stuff, maybe? Yeah, uh, a blue a blue outfit with armor on top, please. Cole back at you, lost and unsure. He can start with a suit and pants. That'd be good. The two men chatted more. Mostly it was the assistant listing off ideas, and Cove laughing around with uncertain answers. Ultimately, Thal measured Cove and then brought out a few pieces of clothing that would hopefully strike the right chord. Cove is torn between sleek black suit pants with a white button-down shirt and a pair of nice white suit pants with a purple button-down shirt. I guess the second one is closest. <laughs> I am back. A hank has been posted. Oh, let me see. He has arrived. Oh, he's so cute! What a baby! But there's like a little fly in my room. Ugh. Sorry. Oh, that is such a cute little Hank. Love that. Little baby. <laughs> you spoke up to say... Neither. <laughs> the black ones with the white shirt. The black ones the shirt could be a different color. I like the white. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be be that, be that person color coordinating this. I'm sorry, go. I need you to look as much like Flynn as I could possibly do. <laughs> 
like the white pants, but the shirt could be a different color. Oh, what color? Where's blue? Blue! And the pants work. Hold on. Flynn wears white pants, right? Flynn Skifo. Pretty sure. Okay, yeah. He's got, like, white armor. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to tell some Asperia wedding. Absolute legend. I can all have to study up good plushy since the September I became an uncle. As such, I'm a spoiled me someday. That'd be cool uncle after all. Ooh. Every time you say listen, I don't hear anything. Listen, Cove knew from the start. We were having a Tales of Vesperia themed wedding. It was the very first thing I said when we when we talked about getting married. I was like, I want it to be Tales of Vesperia themed, so he knows this. We're getting there, cool. He rubbed his palms against the other, finally seeming more optimistic than uncomfortable. He liked his grin, and I'm sure he likes blue and white. He's he's a beach boy. Cove wandered around the room, poking into the various walls and rocks. There were only a few more decisions to make. Thal followed him, asking questions and pointing out options. He chimed in if he had an idea. Between the three of you talking, decisions were made. In the end, Cove's final look would have... A white jacket. Uh, no vest. A tie? With the selections finished up, Thal hung the complete outfit in a dressing room. Now to try it on. Cove nodded uneasily. He disappeared for long enough that you started to feel anticipation building in your stomach. It's fine. Doesn't quite look like Flynn, but it's there. It kind of looks like his wedding outfit, I think. Let me see. What does Flynn's wedding outfit look like? Yeah! Yeah, he's got like a white... A white vest and... Blue tie. Okay. Every time... Oh wait, I already read that. <laughs> his expression was bashful, blushing in his finery. He was nervous about wearing it, but even more nervous about you seeing it. Ah! Oh. He started, his idea knocking him out of his embarrassment of being the center of attention. Pardon my dehydration, but holy fuck, he looks cute in his suit. He does. He looks like he, like, cut his hair a little bit, too. I just remembered, what if I tried having one of those flower things? You know, those flowers that get pinned to stuff? A corsage? He grinned when the right word came to him, and he tilted his head towards you, asking for your opinion. Yeah, blue flower would really amp up the Flynn vibes. Yeah, a corsage would be nice. Okay. He walked over to politely get Paul's attention. He turned away from the jackets he was sorting and smiled. That's fantastic. Do you need anything else? 10,000% yes. Let's go. Let me see. Uh... He saw Ko force himself to not direct his eyes to the floor at the compliment. His cheeks still turned pink. Can I have a corsage? Do you have them? We do! Just follow me and we'll find the one that you like. What is this fucking wedding planning team of orcs? <laughs> Thal and Zake. <laughs> no, no, listen. Zake was the name of the place. His name was Za- or their name was Xavier. Uh, imagine, like, Warhammer orcs planning a wedding. That would actually be pretty cool. The assistant led Cove off to a corner with different kinds of accessories. When Cove came back, he had a white poppy corsage pinned to his label. I mean, I guess it's on brand for you, Cove, to wear the poppy. Yeah, I know, but you would have to be an orc to have a cake store named Zake. 
Listen, they just really liked that their name started with an X. <laughs> they probably are a big fan of the Twitter rebrand. So either way, they have no rights. <laughs> he let out a stuttering breath and stood up straight for your evaluation. Cove stiffly spread his arms out, letting you get a good view at the suit. Howdy! Oh, hey there, Overtaker! Hello, hello! Ooh, Cove slaying. Yeah, he's looking really nice and spiffy in that suit. So... How does it look? He got the Sabo look on. <laughs> Well done. Wait, can I change? <laughs> can I change this flower to a blue one? What do you want to change? Oh, I can't change the corsage. Okay. Well, then it's fine. It's perfect. Flawless. Perfection. Unbelievable. Glamorous. Elegant. Magnificent. Delectable. <laughs> Bunny! Oh, oi boss. There's this get here looking to get married, but Day's not wanting a rotten proper rag at Day's wedding. What do we do, boss? <laughs> Better bring out the Vesperia costumes. And that's just all the good adjectives in the thesaurus. He covered his eyes, but you could tell from his blush that he had enjoyed your reaction. His posture relaxed, and he seemed more confident in the clothes. The flower is non-negotiable. I guess so. It, it is on brand for him to have a poppy one. So. Thanks. Co flushed at your overt approval. He sniffed once before beaming back at you. You're really grown up. Mr. Holden's words were choked as he stared at his son in wonder. Yeah, thank God we went to an actual proper wedding place instead of wearing your idea of a wedding outfit. No one even tell me that my idea of a wedding outfit is also not good. My idea for a wedding outfit is perfect. Cole peered at himself closely in a floor-length mirror. He ran shaky hands down the front of his shirt. Yum yum. <laughs> it's smooth. He stretched his limbs and watched how the clothing laid on him. He wasn't quite posing, but he was definitely running the outfit through its paces. He turned back to you as his fingers tapped on the fabric of his trousers. Yeah. This is it. This is what I'm gonna get married in. This is what it'll look like when I'm marrying you. <laughs> his excitement hung in the air like a star, bright and full of energy. Just like the star Vesperia. Yes, it is. This is better than you had hoped when you had first walked into the suit shop. No longer was he blushing or hiding. Pope is ready to marry you in this suit. Aww. Paul gave a thumbs up to Cove, satisfied at a job well done. Congratulations. After admiring the outfit for a little longer, and Mr. Holden sneaking a few pictures, Cove changed into his normal clothes. He finalized the details with Paul. That's gay Cove Holden. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting married? That's gay. Paul pulled out a measuring tape and took a few more quick size checks. They'd be used for tailoring the outfit so that it fit Cove like a glove. You blessed idea. Chunky bear that arrived today, but it's Cove. A chunky little bear shaped Cove. That would be so cute! All the arrangements of getting it paid for and prepared were taken care of as well. It's Cove's suit all wrapped up, it was your turn. You turn to the assistant. Are you ready? Yes, thank you, let's get started. Paul took a step up close to you. Congrats on the wedding, homeboy! Ah, oh, hey son, thank you! Are you coming to my Tales of Asphoria themed wedding where we have a sand bouquet? <laughs> and we eat out of a shark shaped cake? Song do not go, no please come. You'll get obliterated by sand. <laughs> I have the best wedding idea. What do you want to wear in terms of the basic pieces? I want a shirt and pants. Roger that. Do you have colors in mind? For the top, I'd like... Okay, let me Google this. Yuri Lowell Wedding. So he's got like a black vest with a white shirt 
in a white... I'm surprised he's wearing a lot of white. But he's got black underneath. Okay. Okay, so what was this? Rainbow. Wait, what was this twice? White? From the bottom? White? Are you thinking about what this set? Wait, hold on. I want to read this. What are the options? You can have a rainbow- wait, is this a rainbow shirt? A rainbow vest? <laughs> Pocket sand! There's glitter. Oh, wrong pants. <laughs> patisserie sand, please. <laughs> yeah, we're having patisserie chicken for our cake. We got some pocket sand. We're dressing up as Yuri and Flynn. Perfect wedding. Okay, white. Let me read the log. Is that for my shirt? For the top, I'd like white. Okay. And the bottom, white. I can do that. What are you thinking about with the style? He hesitated. Not sure the best way to explain it. Can I bring my Tales of Asperia cosplay, please? Patisserie sand, please. <laughs> Tell you what. I'll list out some words and you can pick what matches your vision best. He nodded and listened to him speak, picking the descriptions you liked one after the other as he recited them. In between. Uh... Matte cloth, I guess? Long sleeved. Uh. Unbuttoned jacket. Buttoned vest. A cravat. Bolo tie. What's an ascot? No, I think he's wearing. Yeah, that's a regular tie. Okay. I like it. Just let me measure you and I'll bring the parts out for you. Am I gonna be able to see my outfit? Please. Bell took out a measuring tape from inside his own suit jacket and took your measurements. I'll be right back. Tell your hands against the size of his legs, what? <laughs> I'll take Cole's hand. Poe's hand was warmer on yours and comforting as you waited. Fred Jones from Scooby-Doo. Oh, your legs. It was my legs? Oh, okay. I mean, I already wrapped my legs around him earlier. <laughs> so, he squeezed her hand back, imbuing it with reassurance. Thal reappeared in no time at all, with your described outfit draped over his arm. He lifted it up and let the full length of it flow out for you to admire. You could definitely say it had a stylistic feel to it. Oh! Whoa, people might think you're doing a photo shoot instead of really having a wedding with that. Now that'll make a splash for sure. What? Yeah. <laughs> Earlier, I like wrapped my legs around it. <laughs> that was quite the choice. <laughs> Well done. I didn't choose my best color. Good, but can I change a part of it? What should I edit? Rethink the colors. White. White. Wait, what? <laughs> so I can't choose my best color? Cole can choose his, but I can't choose mine? Fine. You're welcome to put it on. Can I bring you anything else? We have plenty of accessories to pair with your set. A crown, a shawl, a neck, a train? <laughs> Wait, what? A train? A bracelet, earrings, a jacket, cufflinks, a corsage, an ink. A train? What? What? Hold on. What is this? Is this a thing? Wedding train? Oh! That's no fun. I thought it was like a choo-choo train. 
I thought it was a choo-choo train. <laughs> it's just a thing in your back that is really long and trails out. What the? False advertisement. I want a train, like a choo-choo train <laughs> for my wedding. God damn it. Okay, I guess a corsage. Cufflinks. And that's everything. You can always go back easily by spoiling your mouse wheel. Yeah, it just didn't give me any choice for my best color. I have to be one single color coordination. God damn it. I threw a 10 for fun on Heathcliff's ego and got Sinclair's ego. Well, hey! <laughs> At least it's fine if he corrodes. <laughs> he went to grab your accessories while you changed. He stole a glance at Cove, who had sunk deep into his seat. The cushy leather couch was, had just about swallowed him. He was wired with anticipation, smiling but barely breathing. You shook your head fondly. There were changing rooms in the back, and you closed the polished wood door behind you when you entered. You got into the perfect pressed shirt and pants. The pieces laid on you nicely, not overly large or too uncomfortably tight. You checked yourself over before exiting the room. The view from the mirror was breathtaking. You truly were about to have a wedding. You pushed the solid door aside and stepped back to the main floor of the shop. You paused in front of another well-lit mirror and beamed. Bell returned to your side and helped accessorize you. The look was finished. Yeah, where, where, where's my... change my best color? I want my suit to look like this. The assistant grinned, satisfied. In the mirror, the day you were planning for looked back at you. You and the shirt and pants you'd wear for the ceremony. It felt real. I was nervous. You smoothed down the fabric at your sides. It was a lot to take in. This isn't quite the Yuri Flynn coordination I want. <laughs> you nodded at your reflection and then spun around to face the others. Hey, where did this movie star come from? <laughs> I did something similar for an identity and got open eyes for Ryosu instead. Can't say I was mad though. I like Spider Bud. Hmm. Elf. Why? Why did I say Elf? <laughs> yeah, Cliff's new name is Elf. Cliff elbowed his son with a smile. Poop held his hands over his face, hiding himself rather than blocking you out. He peeked through the gaps between his fingers. Elf. <laughs> Shortly after, I got the other spider bud when rolling for something else. Ooh, nice. Yeah, he's elf now. His hands weren't able to contain the tears that dribbled from his eyes. Yeah, let's go Frodo Baggins. You twisted around, looking back at the mirror. As anxious as you felt, it was the right choice. It had to be. With your perfect outfit chosen, not really perfect, it's not my Yuri Lowe cosplay. <laughs> the only things left were details. You had a few more measurements taken, a tape measure recording your every inch, so that the shirt and pants could fit you exactly. Payment and pickup for the outfit was also ironed out. You would receive the tailored clothing in time for the wedding. Can you imagine if, like, your clothes came in late for your wedding? Wouldn't that suck? He and Cove got into his car once more. He turned the key and started up the AC. After spending all that time in a cold shop, the outside air was warmer than comfortable. Cliff climbed into the back. He had an accomplished expression on his face. We did it! He spoke as soon as all the car doors closed, pride in his voice. Well, now we got the outfit that will satisfy our parents. Let's go pick up our cosplay outfit now. <laughs> We really did it. It's wonderful and amazing. Wow, what a bitch response. It's a good thing we decided to go together so that I could give you feedback. That's like saying, oh, Cove, if you went by yourself, you, you would have chosen a terrible outfit. Wow. Thank you for doing this with me. 
You were grateful that he had agreed to go with you. Despite traditions, you felt that this had been better together. Thanks. Thanks for coming with me too. You really helped. Didn't have to worry that you wouldn't like what I picked out. I was kind of picky. I wanted to make you look like Flynn. When in doubt, cosplay. <laughs> The man wipes his dirty hands on his pants. The man has sand in his room. He don't got taste. A surprise could have been fun, but I'm glad we did it like this. Feeling light, Cove checked his rearview mirror and stared, started to back out. It was time to go. Cove dropped his dad off first at the old neighborhood. Mr. Holden was still in a good mood. Before he left the car, he ruffled Clove's hair. See you. See you later, bud. Bye, Dad. Oh god, he's got white pants! If he wipes his dirty hands on his pants, he's gonna get his white pants all dirty. Ah! I knew I should've got him just armor pants. See, we should've gone with the Vesperia cosplay. He waved at him as he walked off into his house. Cove put his car back out of park and continued driving. In the car, with the scenery flying past you, you reflected on the day. You thought back to what you had put together and felt your heart flutter. The image was crystal clear. You could see yourself in it and the view of your wedding day had become that much more defined in your mind. Yeah, if he has like armor pants and he tries to wipe his hands on it, he's gonna cut it up. Cove, just lick your fingers. It'll taste better. <laughs> just get a napkin, bro. <laughs> Am I marrying a child? Right on time, you entered Baxter's office for your next meetup. He was waiting there for you. We're gonna have, like, our cake. And he's gonna, like, hold my hand and it's gonna be all sticky. Ugh. So? Hello. Were you both able to find pieces you're happy with? Don't say it like that. <laughs> we did. It was wonderful. Yeah. As it should be. What shall we be doing today? Well, the, the only thing we have left to do can get some dance lessons from Baxter! <laughs> Exciting. Oh, you want to get started on that? Exciting! Yeah, fuck, I forgot about this bitch. <laughs> Baxter gestured down to the other door in the space, rolling his wrist to point with his whole hand in an extravagant gesture. There's a room here in the building you can use for dance lessons. I'll need to schedule it, of course. We'll need to be certain there wouldn't be any conflicts. If you could wait a moment, please. His voice is, I don't know, silky? Zets off an aura. Yeah, his, his voice makes me ooga booga. Every time I hear his voice lines, I, I bark. <laughs> he pulled out his phone and swiped his finger a few times. His brow furrowed as he checked some sort of calendar. <laughs> Those emotes! <laughs> Big mood. He tapped something with a flourish and looked up with a grin. Cove watched with, his, with open antsiness. Cove and I can attend lessons in the afternoon. Then, Bunny, we can have the evening. I believe I can pencil us in as early as tomorrow for the first sessions. An evening alone with Baxter? <laughs> Happily, there's enough vacancy in the event room for individual sessions. I got a one-on-one -on -one session? One-on-one <laughs> -on -one lessons are ideal for this. Every person is at their own level and will need guidance with different aspects. Baxter's gonna give me a one-on-one -on -one lesson. <laughs> I can get everything arranged today if that works for you. Cook nodded seriously. There was no hesitation coming from his corner, despite his jitteriness. He's probably nervous that I'm gonna be alone. <laughs> Let's do it. You shot Cove and Baxter, please thumbs up. Yeah, that's good. Baxter placed the phone down to clasp his hands together. His enthusiasm was hard to miss. The one time his VA called a sea turtle a tea turtle. <laughs> oh my god, really? Excellent. I'll make it happen. And he did. Baxter made the necessary arrangements right afterwards. He asked for your input occasionally and finalized the times. 
He planned each detail out exactly. Any specific idea that Kova Yu had was jotted down and added to the considerations. Well, this was what Awuga was for. <laughs> Awuga! What kind of music are you thinking of? Ring a bell! Would you rather go with something fast or something slow? It doesn't have to be ballroom staples. I'm more varied than that. Yeah, let me get out my Tales of Asporia OST. A recent wedding I helped with went with classical music for the first half, and then early 2010s dance music for the last half. There's no wrong answer for this. Go shrug and left space for you to answer. Can I please fill it in myself? I think it'd be fun to have video game soundtracks. Let's go! <laughs> there were many video games with great soundtracks that you thought would be a good fit for a dance. Fun karaoke, let's go! Why were we there back to back? Why were we there face to face? <laughs> Baxter nodded approvingly. Cove is even more supportive of your recommendation. <laughs> do not, do not! I do! Cool. I think I can guess some of the songs you're hoping for. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, Cove. Insert Halo theme. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. And speaking of, let's chat about particular tracks. Ring a bell! After continuing to discuss music selections for a while, your office time with Baxter finished, and it was time to leave for the day. Goodbyes were said, knowing that the separation wouldn't last long. Tomorrow wasn't far. The hours passed by quickly. It felt like a blink by the time the session rolled around. I guess maybe the fucking orc cake and orc suit guy are actually fine and good since this is a fantasy game. <laughs> a bit after lunch, he drove Cove over to his first solo dance lesson with Baxter. He was definitely nervous on the drive there. Despite his usual anxiousness, he insisted that he wanted to do the lesson on his own. He would show you his moves after he practiced. <laughs> show me your moves. He wished Cove luck and dropped him off, hoping he had a good time. He drove off as soon as he disappeared into the building. The plan was to run errands until it was time to pick him back up. He had heard about a new store that had opened recently. It was close enough that you decided to check it out and see if they had anything worth getting. Unfortunately, the store didn't have a good selection compared to other options, but you stalled in the snack section. You debated buying something in order to not leave empty-handed. Hmm. I am gonna buy a chocolate bar. You plucked a bar off the shelf and bought it. I'm, I'm like craving chocolate really bad. <laughs> Can't wait for my next shift at work so I can steal stuff from the pastry section. <laughs> Another store that you knew would have what you needed was minutes away. A short drive later and you were on your way to finishing your errands. It's nice to keep busy while waiting for Cove. When the time came, you drove the car up to the front of the building, stopping where Cove stopped on the sidewalk. Same, that's the old god. We gotta go to that one bakery sometime song. <laughs> I need to show you, they're, they're like chocolate filled pastries. So good! Cove greeted you with a smile and hopped into the car. He closed the door behind him and buckled his seatbelt with a click. How'd it go? Cove shifted in his seat while rubbing the back of his neck. It was awkward, as you probably guessed, but not that bad. He grinded as he thought back. You listened to the vivacity in his voice, even as you focused on driving through the parking lot. Baxter's kind of a good guy, not a bad teacher. You pulled out from in front of the building and started making your way through the first intersection. Now, what did you talk about with all of your time together? To yourself, you admitted you were really curious. From what you could remember of that summer years ago, Cove and Baxter never spent time with just each other. Cope hummed and thought. We mostly just focused on the dance lesson. I think we also talked about some general wedding stuff. Hi hi, wanted to stop by and say hi while I wait for my sis to come back home and play White Day a Labyrinth named school with me. How are things? Oh hey there, Adabel. 
Ooh, excuse me. Hey there, Adamalo. Things are going good. We got our wedding almost planned out. Oh, oh my god. Am I having so much hiccuping? I am not going to this fucking wedding. You have no choice. I sent you your invitation. Everyone in chat is coming to my wedding. He asked me about the material of napkins I liked. Oh, uh, what, what a riveting conversation. Nothing personal. He didn't bring up anything from back before, when he wasn't our wedding planner. Aww. Mailer Damon. He paused for a moment, then continued. It had been on purpose. I guess he didn't forget how I'd get uncomfortable when people acted too friendly too fast. Aww, well that's nice of him. You heard Cove tap the car door with his fingers as you made a right turn. I... I wouldn't have minded talking a little more now, so... We kinda made progress in more than just my coordination. A smile tugged at your lips, that was good to hear. You finally pulled into a parking space and parked the car. You couldn't linger in the car too long, given your own lesson. It was time to glow. You looked at the grocery bag in the back seat with the snack you had bought. Yeah, I'll offer some to Ko. If you're hungry, feel free to snack. Probably needed some fuel after dancing for so long. You pointed over at the food, and Cove's eyes widened at the sight. See, I'm, I'm glad I bought something. <laughs> Frick you, dwarf. We're going. It's not every day a bum gets married. <laughs> I know you meant bun, but it's funny that you said bum. Mmm, <laughs> that's gonna be good. I'll wear my finest suit and make sure to shine my head. Thank you, Sven. I'll see you later. Bye. I love you. Ah! <laughs> he made the wedding music video game music. Yeah, what's wrong with that? I'll be sure everyone is at your wedding, bestie. Thank you. It was a real option in this game, and there was zero pushback from Cove or Baxter. Because they know I have good taste in video game music. We're gonna play Ring a Bell for our first dance, and then we're gonna play the Hul Grunts Cathedral theme. Then we're gonna play like some songs from Dot Hack Sign. <laughs> I'll make you wedding art or cool or horror art for the wedding. Thank you. We are having a Tales of Esporia themed wedding, where I'm dressed as Yuri Lowell and Cove is dressed as a uh, as Flynn, and our bouquet is sand. I regret to inform you, I am not that easy. Too bad. You're going. Just wanted to ask, have you ever played White Day Elaborate in school? I have not. I think I've heard you talk about it before, but I've never played it. I love you too. You left Cove with the car and walked with a bounce in your step to meet up with your wedding planner turned dance instructor. The doors of the office building let you in after a firm yank. The air was cooler than what was outside. You better play Midnight Circus at some point. I'll do a circus act if needed. <laughs> Will do. I'll, I'll put that in my itinerary. In my itinerary. You followed Baxter's directions from yesterday to navigate the white halls. A left past the fire extinguisher and then a right at the first set of doors. Or even do like one of the Genshin Impact songs where the, where the VA sing the song. You found a set of thick glass doors. You peered into a large event room. It had to be the place. You entered the space and noticed the towers of chairs on the sides of the room. It was easy to imagine the room filled with a crowd. But for now, it had all been cleared for your private class. <laughs> Why are you bugging me? Sounds like someone wants me to redeem six Japanese only for five minutes so I don't have to understand this dumbassery. You were asked anything. Hey, what? I answered! Zhao's VA plays My Heart Will Go On on Kazoo. There we go. Perfect song. I did! <laughs> Ye of little belief. With the paper and an elegant fountain pen left on the counter, he strode forward and met you in the middle of the large room. Hello. Welcome, Bunny. I'm glad you can make it. You need to play it? Frick it possible, I'll buy it? Let's say it's basically perfect balance between survival horror, dating sim with three cute girls, 
And now recently a new route, a new girl, and also free roam. Explain a haunted school in this book. Oh, wow. That sounds really cool. I'll have to check it out, though. Hey! There's an option to select. You deserved it regardless. Hey! They were fine with it. He waved at him and smiled warmly. I hope you've been well. I'm ready to boogie. <laughs> he pantomimed a few dance moves enthusiastically. Baxter chuckled. You've come to the right place. Baxter pulled the remote from his jacket pocket and clicked a button. A speaker system you hadn't noticed before crackled the life. Familiar music filled the room. Why were we there back to back? Why were we there face to face? I must be the light when you're in the dark. We're dancing to that. That was scary. I think you will like it. Baxter looking nice. Yeah, he looking clean. Yeah, he's gonna dress up as Estelle for our wedding. He must have been busy to already have the songs that you had talked about yesterday ready. He tucked the remote back into his pocket, and then Baxter turned his attention to you. He offered you his hand. Well. I'll lead. At least, at first. We can switch later if you prefer. His gesture felt grandly formal. He had enough performance practice to really feel as if he'd stepped out of a fairy tale ball. He took his hand, ready to get started. His fingers linked around yours, and he put his other arm across your back. The other hand hovered awkwardly in the air. You weren't sure where to place it. His shoulder? His back? He noticed your confusion and directed you into the proper form for a slow dance. When you were comfortable, he guided you into the steps. You watched your feet, carefully following his lead. In this timeline, I mean Root, I call Baxter. Well, you get cold. <laughs> you have to come cosplaying as Rita to our wedding then, Adamello. <laughs> for the Rita Exestel ship. <laughs> he was a good teacher and a reliable partner for dance. It didn't take long for you to start moving to the music. Following the rhythm, rather than worrying about what foot went where. I will. Okay, good. Baxter suddenly smirked, the twitch of his lips getting your attention immediately. You know. Oh, you know, I recall that it wasn't just dance lessons I was available for, was it? <laughs> I also offered to give you rides whenever you needed them, did I? Yeah! <laughs> oh, you talk about rides. Oh, okay. Hopefully I haven't let you down with that. You never let me down, ever, Baxter. It took a moment before you understood what he was talking about. You laughed, clear and bright. I think I'll be alright. We have our own cars now. I'm impressed he, he still remembered. But then again, he also remembered it. It had been a particularly memorable summer all those years ago. Being firmly in the flow, the discussion died down. The only exchange was the music and the sound of your shoes on the sleek floor, in time with each other's. This guy is a charmer, he really is. I can't wait for me and Song to play Baxter's DLC. <laughs> Let me see. You know, I'm gonna ask, why did you never contact me again? He faltered in a step, throwing the dance to a halt. He recovered quickly, his toes going back to precisely formed motions. But his face still showed the strain of the upset. I, I know you had to go back to college, but I never understood why that meant you couldn't text or anything. I... He took a deep breath. Tremors went through his shoulders from the effort of keeping his perfect poise. I apologize for vanishing so thoroughly and not even attempting to keep in touch. It was unkind. His lips twitched. It was closer to a grimace than anything resembling a smile. Even though you thought that's what he was attempting. Me? <laughs> Big mood. I don't think it mattered at the time to end it completely once I left Sunset Bird behind. At least, that's what I told myself, or rather, what I hoped would be true. Oh, I wished hard that when you and everyone there didn't see me anymore, that you'd never think of me again. You'd go on with your lives happily and I wouldn't factor into it. 
<laughs> Did you not notice how much I barked over you? <laughs> Baxter, how could I ever forget you? I didn't forget you when I met you in middle school, Baxter. <laughs> And that wasn't even when I was formally introduced to you as a character. He paused again. How did music sound so much like cold silence? Oh, he looks so sad. We must protect baby. I wonder what happened to him. Huh. It doesn't make much sense to you, I imagine. Dexter offered a one-shoulder shrug for your supposed trouble. I'll make a I'll make a soft encouraging noise. He took another deep breath, and determination sparked in his eyes. He must be deaf to not hear anyone bark for him, right? The entire room's just filled with people barking for him. <laughs> there's you, there's me, there's Jackie, there's Annabella, there's Sven. It's the eternal story of my life. I want to be liked, but I can't be important. What? You're important to me. A friend for a season, a planner at a wedding. That's me. I'm not like him. Cove is a fiance. He stays. He tries. Clingy. I think your friends and family like to joke. I never thought so. Um, Baxter, you're important too! What up? What did I lose? My life or our life? My sanity. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're dancing with Baxter and he's explaining why he was gone for so long. Sounds like he's got, like, a lot of self-hatred, thinking that, like, no one would ever care about him. Baby! <laughs> he didn't even care for me, but was willing to dance together to do a better job for his wedding. I, I think he likes you now. Like, it, it takes a while for Cove to warm up to people, but I think he wants to be friends with you, Baxter. In life, there are just someones, and then there's the one. You found your one, and I'm genuinely thrilled you did, and that he found his. All I want is to assist with that happiness, and to not get in the way of it. <clears throat> but neither of us are here for our old relationship dynamic. That's ancient history. You don't need to get mired in the past when the future is so bright. What do you mean? <laughs> Dexter became symmetrical and lost all his friends. Poor guy. Baxter's tone was pointed with finality. That was as much as he would say. Makes me think what actually happens in his room, right? I'm so curious what happens. The pace of the dance sped up, going back to what it had been before. He nearly stepped on his foot at the sudden change. Insane. Since he clearly was not going to discuss it more, he didn't attempt to pry for more details. This has gotten into incredibly personal territory. I just want to tell him that he always matters to me. Like, I'll always care about you, Baxter. Even if I'm getting married and all that. Like, friends aren't... I'm, like, the type of person that's, like, you know, like, friends aren't, like, a lower level to, like, a relationship. Like, friends mean a lot to me, too! <laughs> Baxter! <laughs> you mean a lot to me, too! He's so sweet. Okay, I'm gonna die in game now. Rip all my hard work. Praying uh, AI doesn't go after me. <laughs> I'll see you later, Adamo. Let me see. You deserve to be important! He dropped his gaze at your words, uncomfortable with your sincerity. He decided not to push anymore, and the tension slowly drained out of him. Baxter schooled his face, and for all the world appeared like the conversation had never affected him. Hi, how's it? Oh, Baxter. What do you mean? Oh, Baxter. Hey, Twy. Oh, oh, Twy. Oh, it's Twy here. Oh, thank you for the head pats. <laughs> um. I feel like I made this situation awkward going right into that conversation. So, uh, I'm just gonna focus on the movement. <laughs> the acoustics of the room were surprisingly good for dancing. The music was at a good volume, and despite the tile flooring, the tapping of your steps didn't echo distractingly off the walls. It's best boy, the best boy Twy. Also, it's Twy, other best boy. <laughs> so, hey there, Shuriyuki! 
both continued to dance as the song cycled through and back. Thoughts played in your mind about the surrealness of reconnecting with Baxter again after all these years without contact. Yeah, yeah, and you mean that platonically. I totally believe you. Hey! <laughs> However, that was secondary to your goal of dancing well in your upcoming wedding to the love of your life. I heard you say he dropped his gay at your words. <laughs> no, don't drop your gay. Bring your gay. Bring your gay at my words. Be gay at my words. It wouldn't be too much longer until you would be doing this with your husband. Um, yeah, I want to lead. Can I leave now? <laughs> oh no, I'm still here. Just I'm in hard mode and the janitor entered the room and a ghost screamed. So yeah, he will death find me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Good luck, I don't know. <laughs> I was about to suggest that if you want to give it a try. You both re rearranged your positions and you were off across the floor. It was different from following Baxter, but it didn't take long for you to rediscover the right tempo. By the end of the session, night had fallen. You said goodbye to Baxter, and Cove came to pick you up in the car. I mean, oh, Baxter, I said what I said. Hey! If I see my stepson's fiancé flirting with a random guy, yes, I would be mad at said random guy. I said what I said. Listen, we're, we're just friends right now. You mirrored his actions from early in the day, climbing into the passenger seat and clicking in your seatbelt. He took the opportunity to copy you as well. Elio Rose. Not, oh. <laughs> oh, I got the got the cipher movie. <laughs> Let's go. So, how did it go? Police, hands up, drop your gay now. I really hope that Automod catched police as the swear. If only, if only police was the swear. <laughs> the amused sparkle in his eye let you know that using your words was completely and utterly intentional. I know what you, you call halfway to being friends. I know you. <laughs> Listen, we will be closer. We will be halfway friends when we play his route with song. <laughs> Let me see. It was really nice. You enjoyed connecting with Baxter and couldn't wait to dance with Cove in the near future. Cove grinned widely, happy for you. It did not. I'm glad that was a good idea. Also, did I thank you for buying me a snack earlier? It was good. You're welcome. I hope there's some left. <laughs> nope. You craned your neck around to inspect the back seat. Oh, you saw an additional sack, sack and Cove laughed. Don't worry, I didn't eat everything. I bought some drinks to go with them. I thought they'd be nice for post-dance pickup. Oh, thank you, Cove. Don't know where I obtained that emote, but I did. Automod caught police, but not diarrhea. <laughs> Cove better know how much you loved him, especially in moments like this. Oh, hi, what'd I miss? Uh, we got our clothing picked out, and we just finished our dance lesson, so I think we are very close to the actual wedding. With the day's arrangements taken care of, Cove pulled out of the empty lot and started to drive away. He brought a snack. She's your mother-in-law, though. <laughs> Oi. Next time you were scheduled to come by, it would be for the usual kind of office visit. No dancing required. You brought song? <laughs> Don't eat song? <laughs> you highly anticipated meeting back up with Baxter. You had a good feeling about where this wedding was going. When you arrived for your session that day, you noticed Baxter's foot was tapping against the floor. In a steady rhythm, it seemed the lessons from the day before were still on his mind. Hey, yeah. Um, hi. Good afternoon. So nice to see you again. Yeah, it's very nice to see you again, Baxter. Hello. With all of the work, planning, and effort, a thing of the past, you're having your final point with a back day. We better stay in touch, dude. 
The two of you situated yourselves on the purple couch in your normal spots, though Cove is unable to treat the visit as anything near normal. His legs had stiffened with nervousness so badly, the bend in his knees was like the snap of two branches. He nearly fell onto the cushion. Oh, sis is here. Talk to you later. See you later, Adamello. Have fun with your game. <laughs> Baxter, on the complete opposite end of the comfort spectrum from Cove, smiled with a natural ease. <laughs> I don't plan on getting the DLC, you're not getting spoiler. But, there's always a chance we talk about something from past step. Yeah, true. <laughs> I couldn't stay away. I'm only in stage 3 with no DLC. Maybe this won't spoil anything? Well, it's nice seeing you again! Yeah, hello. We are near the end of the DLC. But yeah. Hello, welcome back. Let me see. After how many weddings and appointments we went through? Wait, what? What was he asking? Are you feeling prepared? Let me see. Yes. Cliff didn't react whatsoever. Not to Baxter or you. He was frozen solid. Oh, baby. <laughs> Baxter ran his hands along the inside edge of his jacket, and placed his most encouraging smile on his face. To be honest... In all honesty, you've both done beautifully. The wedding will be an event to be proud of, and I'll be there to make certain it flows smoothly. Yeah, you sure highly anticipated, alright. <laughs> all you need to do now is enjoy yourselves. Each line Baxter spoke chipped away at the frosted shell around Cove until it cracked. Your fiance replied in small voice, The thing I'm most excited for with this is seeing how it handles all my choices. Especially the sand. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thanks. Mm, now, oh, Maggie's here! Hello there, Maggie! Hello, hello! We just got done with our wedding prep, so I think we're gonna jump into the wedding now. Having broken the ice, Baxter easily shifted back into work mode. He touched the lips of his fingers to a pile of papers on the desk to his side. I've got the details for the hotel for you here. I was able to book two standard single bedrooms for you and your parties to use to get ready in. The hotel is minutes from the ceremony venue, so you won't need to make a trip out there the morning of. Oh, ooh, excuse me. Out there the morning of. Not bad. Thanks, Baxter. You're good at this. Those admittance was almost embarrassed. He scratched his cheek and shared a look with you. Can't wait to see your Tales of Vesperia flavored sand shaped cake. <laughs> it's gonna be the best wedding ever. You remember how hard of a time the two of you had getting a room when you had come into Sunset Bird for your mom's anniversary. It was an ordeal. Cliff chuckled, knowing you were reminiscing over the same experience. Baxter accepted the compliment earnestly without prying. He leaned an elbow against his chair's armrest and propped his head up against his hand. Glad to hear it. I do strive to be. Hey, we better be friends after this, Baxter. You better not disappear again. He continued to relax, following up his prior motion with the cross of his legs. I very much appreciate your great patience with the series of questions throughout this experience. I do still have yet one more topic I'd like to discuss. When you leave here, the wedding planning is over. Do either of you have an opinion on seeing your beloved before the ceremony? Uh, uh... That was not something COVID considered. He didn't even have words to back up the hasty interruption. Baxter smoothed it over by elaborate. Yeah, isn't there like the whole thing where like, if you see each other before the wedding, it's like bad luck or something? I don't remember. I know some couples follow a tradition of completely cutting contact in the lead up to the wedding, so it's a reuniting when they come together for the ceremony. Others stay apart physically, though communicate over the phone, and those are those who don't participate in that whatsoever and stay with one another. Oh, there are those. This time, Cove gave himself space to consider it, letting the concept sink in. Lobster. I hardly know her. <laughs> Yeah, bad luck. Okay, so maybe I should do it so we don't have bad luck. I don't know. 
I mean, I didn't have plans to be away from Bunny. You know, I like being around him when that's an option. I guess maybe we could do that if it's a special thing for weddings. I'm glad to see I'm a bad influence on chat. <laughs> He laughed breathily and sent Baxter a question of his own. Are you gonna make fun of me for being clingy now? Never. <laughs> you know just how much Baxter meant that. Cove, however, didn't have the same context. Yeah. He he likes that you're clingy. Like it's not like a negative personality trait. I'm glad I had that talk with Baxter. Feels like he went through a lot while he was away. I think he like hates himself or something. That's the vibe I'm getting and that's why he was away for so long. Like he thought no one would care about him. I'm still angry that you did that though, Baxter. Oh, okay. Very sweet, Baxter, but he's definitely clingy. Let me see. See. I'm just gonna pat him on the shoulder. In disbelief, Cove's eyes bounced back and forth between you and your planner. He was able to express his want to always be around you, and no one in the room had given him a hard time for it. Cove absolutely beamed at that revelation. It was a free wedding miracle. Aww. Baxter, I hardly know her. <laughs> he was charmed by both his overt affection for you and by how cute he genuinely was. But you made an effort to not be entirely distracted, and you gave an answer to the question at hand. Squealing at Baxter? Really, Elio? Really? Does this surprise you, Twy? <laughs> Someone literally clipped me barking at him. Hmm. Yeah, let, let's, let's still talk over the phone, but stay in separate hotel rooms so we can have the... The good look. The good wedding look. Yes, definitely. Call me. I'm glad you asked, because yeah, I am a little clingy. Cole shuffled the balls of his feet against the carpet, all the while glancing over at you bashfully. Now we'll join the club. <laughs> you held on to his sweet gaze as long as you could. You're going to have to go on without it for a while soon. Off to the side, Baxter watched the two of you from his spot on the office chair. The fondness of his expression for you and Cove had tipped past his usual professional distance. Not wanting to ruin the moment, he spoke in a soft voice. Twy disapproves. <laughs> well, too bad for Twy. Oh, thank you for the head pats. Yum, 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 yum. Perfect. <laughs> Very good. Everything is settled then. Why do you look sad? <laughs> Which bitch, ooh, I'm so sad I get to move across the country to hang out at this high-class club and take boat rides. How sad for me. Hey! I am Twy and I approve of this message. I'm not surprised, just disappointed. Hey! He held on to his sweet gaze. Isn't that you? <laughs> yeah, I'm his sweet gaze. Oh, color wheel. Let's see, what color should I use? Of kind of cooking though. <laughs> Let's go with this one. Actually, do I have one that looks like Yuri? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. If I can just adjust this a little bit, I can make it look like Yuri. I'm ready for my wedding. Okay, so his hair is like darker. Oh, wait. What did that adjust? Hold on. <laughs> I'm adjusting my color palette. Give me a second. He's got like, like that. And what color is his eyes again? Is it like blue or purple? Very low. It's like purple eyes. They're like gray, I guess. Yeah, it's got gray eyes. No, I am not showing up. You are showing up. You have no choice. <laughs> Notice, 
Turn your volume down when wa wa watching the Baxter route, because the space bunny and pixel ghost squealing, <laughs> right? Okay, and then I'll put a blue flower in my hair to represent Flynn. And then like, gray. There we go. Perfecto mundo. Here is my Yuri color palette for the wedding. Let me save this. I might, I might be using this again. Yuri. There we go. <laughs> Alright, let's go! Very good. Everything is settled then. It sure is. <laughs> oh shit, it's Yuri Lowenthal! <laughs> Yuri DDLC? No, Yuri Tales of Esperia. <laughs> From there, the rest of the meeting was spent going over final details and the whole plan, step by step. Kinda dressed like Baxter, Loki. I yo, let's go! Nice Yuri from Arc B reference. <laughs> Baxter wanted to make sure you were on the same page and prepared for the events ahead. Not kinda, Dwarf is preparing the six course meal and Elio's wedding. <laughs> He shared amusing anecdotes of past weddings he planned. Some highlighted actual potential pitfalls you could intentionally avoid, and others were one in a million debacles. The most unbelievable was a story of a particular orchard ceremony from the year before. The stage was set with flowers, a walkway, seating, and wooden arch at the end. He was looking on in a final survey, primed for the guests to arrive, when an out of control truck with a back end full of apples drove straight through. Jesus Christ! The driver was unharmed when he got the truck to stop, and the couple were still married, albeit in a much simpler arrangement. But Baxter distantly remembers the almost comedic surrealness of it. That's gotta suck. Seeing a completed wedding and then having it flattened back to the ground in the blink of an eye was something he never expected, or hoped, to experience. While the planner chuckled in recollection, Cove leaned over to ask if you thought there'd be any reason a fruit truck might have to be at your venue. You're pretty sure there wasn't. The stories and laughter continued until the end of the appointment. Yeah, it would kind of be a disaster, because we're having it. We're having the marriage on a hill, and then we're having our party in an aquarium. There better not be a car crash at any of those. Reminded you of the final day of class before summer vacation. Technically, you were still in school, but everyone was eager for the fun to begin. Then goodbyes were exchanged as usual, with promises to see each other soon, like there had been every time you visited. All these mentions of Yuri reminds me of how my friend used to have the name Yuri Lollafell in Final Fantasy XIV. God damn. However, when you left the office, you had to wonder if you would ever go back there again. When you saw Baxter next, it would be at the wedding location. What if it's a penguin escape? Like, penguins in Madagascar? <laughs> oh god! We've got like, an octopus trying to like, turn all the penguins ugly. <laughs> Maybe you would return someday, if you and Cove decided to renew your vows and needed a planner again. There better not be a car crash in any of those, or, or, hear me out. How about you hope there's no car crash in general? That too! It would be nice if there were no car crashes in general. Let me see. Maybe you can visit just as friends and not as customers. Yeah, let's continue the friendship, Baxter. Under a wide starry sky, you and Cove hopped into his car to head back. Despite having done it many times before, it felt completely different that time. After the click of seatbelts being snapped into place, there was a silence in the cab. None of the boisterousness from minutes ago had come along with you. Cove's expression was pensive as he rounded the curb and got the car out onto the street. A gentle rumbling resonated over you from wheels rolling across tarmac. They are escaping using the truck. It... It was the only word he managed to articulate before his mouth clamped up tight again. He had an internal struggle made visible, and ultimately, he made enough peace with it to finally smile. <sighs> right now, I have a lot going in my head. You probably guessed that. 
so much I want to say to you about us and what's happened. All of this. But it would probably make more sense if I said it during the wedding, right? His voice dropped to a complete whisper, but his grip on the steering wheel intensified. It's so close now. Cliff took in a deep breath through his nose, allowing his fingers to loosen again. That was followed by him answering his own question. Don't worry about it. Pretend this didn't happen. What do you mean? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. You can say it whenever you're ready, if you ever are. Thanks. You're always nice to me. That warmed you up inside. Nothing felt better than knowing he could rely on you. But there's a lot of other things I'm thinking about too. Like the fact that these are the last moments of our lives together not being married. After this, I'll be your husband. And you'll be my husband too. Unbelievable. I love you, Cove. Love you too. Twisting in your seat, you let the side of your face rest against the back of the chair. Oh, pretend this didn't happen. Oh damn, he's taken back accepting your proposal because you keep simping for the wedding planner as he should. Hey! <laughs> you rested there at the end of such a long protest, watching your almost husband as he continued to drive ahead. The two of you were moving forward, full of hope and anticipation for the very near future. The gay will become official. Let's go. After days, weeks, years of waiting to commit yourself to the love of your life, the morning of your wedding arrived. There was a realization that hit you as you laid in a dark hotel room. I... I, I will try... I would try and, like... Hype myself up for this. You weren't able to tell exactly how long you'd been up at that point. You rolled over to check the clock. Sat on the side table next to the bed was the stock standard digital clock, flashing the current hour and minute in bright red lines. It was time to get up. At least, it was if you didn't want to be late or show up to your wedding in pajamas. And thinking of that, it struck you that Cove had to have gotten up as well if he hadn't woken up even earlier. Reaching over to the table, you got hold of your phone. Clicking it in showed a string of new messages. Oh, baby. Listen, this isn't Umineko. Not NTR. Hey. It's not NTR. We'll, we, we'll have a polyamorous relationship, okay? <laughs> Ko's, Ko's warming up to Baxter. <laughs> it wasn't hard to guess why people might have things they wanted to say to you that particular day. But one name on the list caught your attention over all others. Cove, he'd messaged you. You opened your chat with him instantly and read each individual text. I'm awake. I want to call you, but I don't want to wake you up if you're asleep. Am I the bad <laughs> one here? <laughs> yes, yes you are. No! Am I a degenerate? No! It's important to have a good night's sleep, especially now. Ah! <laughs> it should have been me, not him! <laughs> it's okay, Song. We can both have Baxter. <laughs> My favorite fact about gay marriage is that FNAF is older. Jesus Christ. You're asking Cove to turn the relationship poly after proposing. <laughs> Before the wedding. Like, what? I'm waiting. I'm waiting, okay? I'm waiting. Alright. Beat mode. Beat cam. <laughs> Look at my cool shoes. You can call me when you want to. I love you. You'd started grinning before you even finished the set. And by the end, your heart had started pounding painfully. Who brought you joy so effortlessly? Oh. You tapped at the screen to switch from messages to his contact page, clicking to call. There was already an answer the moment you lifted the phone to your ear. Oh, you're waiting, but still flirting with Baxter. I call that cheating! <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Hello? Bunny? At least they asked me for the wedding. It could have been worse. See? See? Yes, hi! Oh, cool. Um... His tone grew softer, and you pressed the phone closer to hear. 
Congratulations on your wedding. You're saying that as if you're not involved. <laughs> Beat before the honeymoon? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations on your wedding. You turned back happily. Elio honey bun, why are you showing feet online? Cause Linux redeemed it. Thank you. So make sure that Cole doesn't see his face. He just gets to see his face. <laughs> it was a lovely moment to share, both mundane and incredibly special in its own way. We're like FaceTiming and I'm just showing him my feet because I'm like, it's bad luck if you see my face before our wedding. Here's my feet. <laughs> But then Cove gave a deep sigh. The gentle voice turned to a distant whisper. It's almost time. He brought some levity back to his tone with a joking question. Would it be wrong to say I'd rather go see you instead of getting ready? <laughs> hmm. Not to say, but you shouldn't actually do it. That got a laugh from Cove. I'll stay. People are coming here soon for the wedding party. After making a declaration to be responsible, he stalled there. Alright. Yeah. Cole's yeah wasn't directed at anything in particular. He was grasping to fill space to buy time while he sorted his thoughts. We're getting married. I'm going to marry you. The gravity of the occasion fell on Cove's heavier and heavier. On Cove heavier and heavier as he vocalized it. My stomach hurts. <laughs> No, come! <laughs> we weren't able to say another word before he sucked in an audible breath. I have to go, right now. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> it's getting worse, but I want to do this more than anything else. <laughs> He's being the squeaky toy now. Your heart went out to the man you loved. You knew how these events were a struggle for him. There was a gasp as he finally let out the air he had been holding in. Bye. I love you. I love you too. Without letting his determination lapse, Cove ended the call. As sort of an exchange it was, hearing his voice had been such a nice way to start the day. He knew you'd made the right choice to not fully separate. He sprung off the mattress onto your feet and got into action. He had places to be and people to see. Your clothes were hanging up against the door of this small hotel closet, and you went right over to admire the outfit. Oh my god. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> that was loud. Tumby. Very loud tumby. <laughs> it was fantastic. The day was fantastic. Everything was fantastic. You could barely contain yourself. From there, you went into the bathroom to brush your teeth and shower before anything else. Once clean and dry and half-dressed, you went back out into the main space of the hotel room. Your phone lit up with a new message and you glanced at it. The wedding party had arrived. They were in the lobby. Let's go. You put your own phone down to pick up the hotel's landline. When the desk manager answered, you explained the situation and they promised to lead the group to your room. The call ended simply. A short time later, a knock vibrated through the heavy front door. He answered it right away. Ho ho. Clara was there with a smile to greet you. The rest of the party filled in after. Congrats and hellos were exchanged as they passed. Wait, is the party before the wedding? I thought the parties were after the wedding. Or are they just prepping for it? Hi, this is great. Hmm. Hmm, who should I have do my hair? Yeah, let's have a stylist. Let's be fancy. And... I do not put on makeup, sorry. Kyra knew the arrangement and would make sure it stayed on track. You and your party got right to work, changing, crimping, and polishing up for the occasion. I want Kyra to touch my hair. You fool, you absolute fool. Listen, is she a stylist? I think not. I would let Kyra put makeup on me to have her touch me. 
go hydrate. <laughs> She's my mother-in-law. During the flurry of preparation, the stylist arrived. Kara handled that, going down to the lobby personally to lead the stylist up to the hotel room. And she's my mommy. No, she's my mommy. <laughs> you got yourself tucked, zipped, and buttoned into your stylish shirt and pants when a series of rapid, but not especially loud, knocks struck the door. Only a few people could come to the room without approval, and the sound was not cove. Wasn't any of his usual notable pauses between knocks. That left one other main option. You thought as your maid of honor went over to answer the door. I just want to hold Elio's hand. I will give up Kyra if I get that. Okay, thank you. Oh, ooh, he looking good. There on the other side was your partner in the wedding journey, Baxter. His outfit looked as though he reverted back to his teenage self. It was all black. You're not wearing the pink coordination I gave you. You're supposed to be dressed as Estelle. <laughs> okay, my entire chat is thirsty for Kyra. I feel that. <laughs> yep. Twy and Barn are down bad for Kyra. <laughs> but you were aware that staff would be dressed top to bottom in dark shades to be recognizable to the guests as employees and not as possible long lost cousins twice removed. I make up for it for the whole chat. <laughs> he offered his polite greetings of his own to you and your party. I am thirsty for water. Then go drink some water. Hello and a very good morning to you. Elliot, you must sim simply stop flirting with the wedding planner. I'm sorry, I'm only human. Hi, good morning. This is what you're giving up Kyra for, Barn? <laughs> hey. You look incredible already, but don't fret. I won't interrupt the process for long. How are you? I'm here to check in. Is there anything you need? Um, do you have a way to speed up time? The curve of the smile pulled ever so slightly higher. No wonder Cove said congrats for your wedding. He's not even the groom! <laughs> Emergency change of plans for the groom. Unfortunately not. Though, let me add, I also came in order to keep you informed on the wedding status. Help! <laughs> Help? A hopeful bent came through in your tone. Yeah. The status is, it's ready when you are. It should go off without a hitch. That was music to your ears. You're so grateful Baxter had gone to as much effort as he had for this. Hope is the groom. Get a room. <laughs> With absolute earnestness, Baxter wished you well. He has his redeeming qualities, I assure you. <laughs> Take Thank care. you. I'm glad you're not lying. Take care, Bunny. I'll let you return to your preparation now. I mean, mommy. <laughs> yeah, she's my mommy, not Twy's mommy. He wishes she was his mommy. Oh, thank you for the follow, Spooder32. I hope you enjoy it here. Welcome, welcome. The frenzied mood of wedding work swept back in with no further distractions. I guess Baxter does have redeeming qualities that doesn't justify Elio simping for him on his wedding day. Oh wait, you meant Elio. Hey! Let me see. Uh, I guess I'll clean up my nails. My nails were short. I bite at my nails too much. Your party was there to get you through the whole morning of preparation. There were laughs and a few tears. All happy. There was a time investment. However, the look did eventually come together. Kyra is mommy, correct. <laughs> the clothes in your hair were all set to what had been planned for the day. You're so grateful Baxter put in so much effort. That's quite literally his job. <laughs> hey, I can still appreciate it. Thank you for your hard work, Baxter. You glance down at yourself, fully dressed to get married. Let me see. I'll do a happy little twirl. You stood in the center of the room, and after a moment to yourself, the rest of the group surrounded you. Ooh, she's looking nice. You never look better. That's saying something, just saying. Thank you, Lee. 
suit you too, too. Oh, is everyone dressing up in purple for my wedding? That is the Yuri color. Nice job, kiddo. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about you, Spooter? I'm just having a nice chill day getting married in this video game. <laughs> You're all grown up. I'm so glad I was able to be here for this one. And then the moment had arrived. Your body felt hot under your expertly tailored clothes. You didn't have to wait any longer. Your wedding was about to begin, and Cole would be there when you arrived. You took a deep, steadying breath and stepped out into all- Oh wait, yeah, I think I know why they're wearing purple. I think I- I'm a vermin, squish me! I should have known you'd do that when you saw Kyra. <laughs> yeah, I made purple our, our wedding theme, that's right. Rapidly, you made your way to the elevator and took it down to the lobby floor. Giga based. <laughs> Dexter is hot, even when he's just standing there. For real, for real. Didn't take you very long to weave across the hotel lobby and exit through the front doors. Outside, you immediately spotted the rental car that was sent to bring you to the Poppy Hill. You slipped into the car and your maid of honor tucked in after you. You fidgeted restlessly in your seat and settled on stretching your legs out. The corner of your mouth tugged into a smile with a light chuckle. There's at least plenty of leg room. Wait, what, what was that that you just shared? That was your choice. Report live stream. When Elia says she's my mommy, not yours. Hey! <laughs> I'm good. Well, that's good. Everyone looks nice and purple, yeah. I, I like that I went with that as the choice. It's a very nice, like, pastel-y purple, too. Really like pastel purple. These five seconds are a good summary of us in chat. What is this? Did I already use up 9k points this stream to A, call Elio Degenerate, and B, sent for Kyra? Yes. Do I regret it? No. Hotel? Trivago? <laughs> I see you're learning. From barn with that. Resist the Empress. But she's a woman. Simon, you have to resist the Empress. <laughs> but she's a woman. Yeah, that is you guys. <laughs> yep, that sure is you. Glancing out the window, your eyebrows raised in surprise because you recognize just how far you were from the poppy hill. I wish I had a mom. It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! Too bad. She's my maid of honor. It would only be a few more minutes until everything you'd been working towards would finally come to fruition. Nothing felt real at all. That's probably how I would feel. Now that you were minutes away from the venue, your excitement was starting to change. Rubbing the palms of your hands down your thighs, you were starting to feel disconnected. You must acquire guardians. Let's get Jack Frost. He's a guardian of the galaxy. Not great. <laughs> Did I just get him mixed up with another IP? Anyway. Your breath caught in your throat. The wedding felt like a vivid dream. Kyra placed a hand over one of yours and tenderly squeezed it. <laughs> you jealous? You jealous, chat? <laughs> Well, thank you for the hydrate, Linux. I feel like I've been doing the Hotel Trivago for a while. Ah! I can resist. It should have been me, not him. It's not fair. <laughs> She's your maid of honor. She's my maid of lust. I should hydrate. <laughs> 10k. <laughs> it's not fair. Wait, yeah, you guys are being too horny for Kyra. Hold on. Let me get out the bonk stick. What a dirty adult you are. <laughs> yeah, you guys are being dirty adults right now. Let me get up my bunk stick. Kyra is so fine. My models pause while it's loading my bunk stick. It's like saying you are you like air too much. <laughs> Alright, chat. I wish Kyra would bonk me. Too bad. I'm bonking you. Get bonked. Guys are being too horny. Yamero! Yamero! 
やめてくだした My day be so fine and then Kyra <laughs> I like air too much I like to breathe Yeah, air's pretty good Please do not reject air I regret nothing Sven can resist many temptations But Gary's Vicarian Oh no <laughs> It's not a Baldur's Gate character I think being bonked while having Kyra smiling at me like that is a bad thing You clearly don't know me Oi <laughs> yeah, I'm bonking you while her picture is there to tell you something. It's a message. I know today is a crazy big event, and that you're already acutely aware of this, but take my word for it. It'll only get better from here, I promise. With an added wink, Kyra squeezed your hand again. <laughs> you think... Listen, listen. There should be certain expectations when Kyra is involved, don't you think? <laughs> True. I just gotta accept that chat is horny for Kyra. I'm gonna hug her. I'm gonna hug her. <laughs> Kyra laughed as she realized what you were doing. She held you lovingly in her arms. <laughs> the face makes it better. You guys jealous? You guys jealous? You guys jealous? You're both gonna be amazing out there. I hope so. It's alright. The only thing that matters is that this is what you both want, right? Me. Garrus Vakarian is from Mass Effect. Oh, okay. Right. I just got the best news ever, and by news, I mean an image, and by an image, I mean Varn doing the Lord's work. What did he do? She released you from her grip, and there was a mischievous glint in her gaze. You braced yourself in your spot, in your seat. You want to marry my baby boy? Yep. You could feel a burning blush coming up to the surface, but you didn't turn away from Kyra. Grinning broadly, you nodded. Yeah, I want you to be my mommy. I really do. Good. You have nothing to worry about then. Baxter wasn't kidding earlier when he said that the hotel was near the ceremony. The trip was already over and there wasn't another second to spare. I provide the sauce, my child. What did you do? Let me see. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he took a screenshot of her. <laughs> I see. Not a hold on it. Carefully, you exited the car, went forward, and finally took in the first sight of your ceremony. Want to marry my baby boy? No, I want to marry you, baby girl. Oh, what did you just send me? You just sent me like seven images of her? See? And Barn just like spammed my DMs with pictures of Kyra. The same picture of Kyra. <laughs> Puppy Hill, the quite literal- ah! <laughs> It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! <laughs> the quite literal backdrop of your childhood, forever nestled behind the home you grew up in. And the place where you found a sad little wavy eyebrowed boy years ago. Only Kyra. Only Kyra. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna look up something for this. Let me see how much we have left of the wedding DLC. Where I am at. Because if we still got a bit, I'm gonna switch to Friday Night Funky. Let me see. How much is left? Okay, yeah, I think there's still like a, a solid hour. Solid hour or two of content for this, so I think we will switch over to uh, Friday Night Funkin'. But I will be going on a BRB real quick, cause my tumby is growling, so I need to go eat a burger. But I will see you guys in a few seconds. In a few minutes, I mean. A lot. Yeah, Zoomer game. <laughs> yep. We're gonna play the Zoomer game. I'll see you guys in a bit. Yeah, Friday Night Funkin', it's Friday here, let's go! 
<laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys in a bit.